Hi, I'm Mark from Valor XL. Thank you for joining me. Today, I'd like to take you on an introductory tour of Microsoft ClipChamp, which is an online video editor that's part of Windows 11. If you don't currently have ClipChamp, I'll leave a link in the description below the video, and you can go out to the Microsoft Store to download it. Now, there is the free version of ClipChamp, which is what we'll be using today. You can also get a paid version which does have some more features and functionality. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But after you've downloaded it, you can launch it. And I'm going to go ahead and sign in using my Google credentials. And when you initially sign in to ClipChamp, you'll be on this page. Now, ClipChamp is an online video editor, which is really convenient. It gives you the ability to work on your projects from anywhere on any computer. And it's forgiving of older hardware because by doing online video editing, that's where all the heavy lifting is taking place. So even if you don't have the most up-to-date computer, you can still get some great work done. Now, ClipChamp was originally developed by an Australian company and then purchased in September of 2021 by Microsoft. I mention that because it reminds me a lot of the video editor in software from another Australian company, Canva. And if you are a Canva user, you might see some familiarity as we get looking at the features of ClipChamp. Now, as you can see here, you can start working with a template, but I'd like to go ahead at this point and we're just going to create a video completely from scratch. This is the workspace that you'll be developing your video in. We're defaulting here to 16.9, and that is what I would like to go with. Now, you'll notice that there are two vertical toolbars here, one on the left and one on the right. The one on the left is giving you the ability to work with your media. You also have access to some online options. And then once your media is in your project, that's where this taskbar comes into play, because over here is where you can make adjustments to the media that you have imported. This is the preview screen where you can look at your clips and actually see what the finished project will contain. But down here is where you will construct the project. This is the timeline, and this is where you can actually arrange all of the clips. You can arrange still photos, audio, sound effects, and that's where you'll build your finished project. So let's start off by importing some media, and I'd like to go ahead and bring in a couple of video clips. And I'll tell you what, let's bring in a few more. And we'll go with those. Now, what I'd like to do to start things off is just take one of these clips and I'm going to click, hold, and drag it down here and drop it into the timeline. Now, you'll notice that it gave us a message here that says we matched your media it resized the image based on the original file aspect ratio of the clip itself. So it's actually a 21 to 9. Now I'm going to go ahead, I could certainly keep it as is, but I'm going to change that to 16.9 and that will match the overall aspect ratio that I wanted to go with for the project. So now what I could do is play the clip by clicking here and when I do that Watch this because this is the playhead. And as a clip is playing, the playhead will move through it. It's basically giving you the opportunity to see where you currently are within the clip. Now you can click, hold, and drag that back and forth manually. You can also click here and it will take it all the way to the beginning. Now, one of the first things I wanted to mention is if you come up here on the right-hand side, you can click on audio, and this gives you the ability to change the volume of your clip. So you could increase it or decrease it, and that really comes into play when you start working with things like narration, voiceovers, sound effects, background music. That way you can make sure that everything is properly balanced. We'll just let that as is for now. Now what I'd like to do is bring another clip down, so I'll click, hold, drag that down. 
Now I'm going to zoom out here. You have a zoom out and a zoom in control. Zooming out enables you to stand back and get kind of a big picture overview of the entire timeline. That's convenient when you want to see where all the different clips are so that you can change the order of things or you can insert something. But zooming in can be really convenient when you're doing editing and you really want to be precise because you can get down to not only the second, but less than a second. You can do extremely precise measurements in ClipChamp. But you'll notice here that there is a gap between these two. Now I could simply click, hold, and drag this so that they are tight up against each other. But one of the nice things in ClipChamp is if you have a lot of separate video clips sitting in your timeline, you can right click and click on delete all visual gaps and it will automatically move all the clips so that they are tight up against each other and you don't have any separation between them. Now let's say that we didn't want this to just have an abrupt start. Well, one of the things that you can do is you can fade in and out of clips. So I'm going to click here and now you can see it has this green box around it so we know we are working with that particular clip. And now if I come up here and click on fade, it gives me the opportunity to fade in and fade out. So we will do just a small fade in right at the very beginning of the clip and let's see what that looks like. And there you go. We can vary that however we would like. We can also detach the audio from a clip. So if we wanted to, we could click here and it would actually separate the audio track so that we could further edit and manipulate it. So now we have these two separate clips. I'm going to take a look here at how they transition one into the next. And that's pretty abrupt. So one of the things that we can also do is add a smoothing transition as you go from one clip to the next. So let me zoom in a little bit more. And now to do that, if we hover right between the two clips, it gives us the opportunity to add a transition. When I click on the plus sign, it opens up all of these options on the right hand side. Now you'll notice that some of these have the small icon in them. They're available only if you do have the paid version of ClipChamp but you still have many, many free options available. And I'm going to go with a basic crossfade. So let's take a look and see what a crossfade looks like going from the one clip to the next. And that looks pretty nice. We could vary it if you wanted to. We could make it a much longer transition or an incredibly short one. It's really entirely up to you. But that's a very handy way to add smooth transition from one scene to the next. Let's bring another clip down. And I'll put that right there. And let me zoom out a little bit. And now you'll see at the beginning and the ending of the clip are these vertical bars. So you can click, hold, and drag to resize the video by trimming the ending off or trimming the beginning off. But what's nice is you also have the ability to make edits in the middle of a clip. So to do so, you could simply click here. If you right click, you now have a split tool and it will actually separate this into two separate clips. Now, if you wanted to cut a section out, you could make the left cut like that and then do the same thing for the right cut. And now by right clicking, you could hit delete and simply remove a clip. So it's a very convenient way to trim your video. Even after doing that, I can still click and drag and completely restore the original clip. So that's very helpful as well. Now over here on the left, I wanna skip over record and create. We'll look at that in just a minute. You also do have templates, which we saw on the home screen but there's also music and sound effects. And there are many paid options, but there are many free ones as well. And that's really convenient. So if we wanted to add this, we could simply click the plus sign and now it's moved down into our timeline. So if we wanted to make sure that that moved the entire way to the front, I can click, hold and drag. And that is now right there at the very beginning of our video. Now, what you can do is adjust the volume on that clip as well 
so that it's playing at a level that doesn't overpower whatever is in the main clip. It's less of an issue here where it's primarily just sounds, but in a version where you actually had something that you might be doing a voiceover or there were people talking, it would be really critical to make sure that the music wasn't too loud. Now you'll notice that there was a little bit of dropout there. That tends to happen sometimes because you are working online. Sometimes when you're previewing things, you might hear some little pops or some hesitations. They won't be there in your finished product, which is good. I want to zoom in a little bit here and show you something else because the music that we brought in is much longer than these clips actually are. So the first thing I'd like to do is trim off all of the excess. And to do that, I'll just bring the playhead right here to where this clip is ending. And now I can right click and hit split. And now I'll right click and hit delete. And so we've completely eliminated that. Now what would be nice is as this is all ending, it would be really good to simply have a fade out. And let's do that. Let's, uh, first of all, I'm gonna drop the volume a little bit on that clip. And now what we can do here is on the clip itself, I'll click on fade. Let's do a fade out of one second. And now on the music, we'll do the same thing. We'll do a fade out at the end of one second. So the audio and the video will fade simultaneously. You also have the ability to add stock video. There are some free options. The majority of the really good ones are in the paid plan. There are also stock images, including free and paid. And one nice thing too is that you can add text. So let me go back to the very beginning here. So I'll go up here. I just want to go with plain text right now. You have many different options that you can select from. These are animated, but I just want straightforward text. So if I click on the plus sign, it has now given us the opportunity to add text. So by clicking here, I can type in whatever I would like. Let me stretch this out a little bit. Now I can resize it. And now if I come over here on the right by clicking on the text box, it gives me the opportunity to change the font. I could make it whatever I would like. I can bold it. I can do normal. I can change the color of it if I want to. I can also italicize it. And of course, I can resize it and do whatever I would like with it. And we can also have it fade in and out as well. So I can come up here. Let's actually have this fade in and fade out. And let's see what that looks like. You also have the ability to add effects to the title where you can make it appear in different ways and add a little bit more depth and flavor to it, which is really nice. You also have the ability to add graphics. So you could put an arrow in here if you wanted to. So I see an arrow there, but I want to see what else we have available. Let's go with this. So we can position this wherever we would like. And I want to make this fade in and fade out as well. So that was a little long. Let me have it fade in right there. And we could extend that a little bit. That was a little shorter than I wanted it to be.
Now, I wanted to go back and just briefly talk about record and create. We're doing a very standard type of video editing here, but if you click on record and create, this gives you the opportunity to capture whatever is happening on your screen along with whatever your webcam is picking up. You could also record just your webcam. You could record just your screen. So that's an extremely convenient way to work if you're doing some sort of a tutorial where you want to show whatever is on your screen and yet also let the viewer see you as you're describing a particular process. Now, the last thing I want to do here today is export. So I'll click here. Now, this is saying mind the gap. So they've noticed a visual gap. Well, let's go back and fix it. Well, it's a little hard to see because we're zoomed out, but we actually have a gap right where the last clip is. So let me drag that in a little bit. And now we should be good to go. Again, I also could have just right clicked and then hit delete all visual gaps. I'll click on export and this gives you the opportunity to select your resolution. You can only go with 4K if you have the paid version, but 1080p works great for me. So I'll go ahead and click there. And now we are downloading it. So that is pretty much a basic introduction to doing video editing using ClipChamp. It's very intuitive, it's easy to work with, and it is really beneficial because it gives you the opportunity to do a lot of graphics, a lot of transitions, and I really suggest that you go in and experiment with it. It's really something that gives you an opportunity to go beyond just having basic video clips. If you've never done any kind of video editing before, it's a great way to start. It's loaded with a lot of functionality and a lot of really professional features. And I think the more you experiment with it, you'll see there's a lot you can do in Microsoft ClipChamp. I hope that today's video was beneficial for you. If it was, would you please give us a like? And in the comments below, let me know, do you use Microsoft ClipChamp or some other video editor? I'd also like to invite you to subscribe to the Valor XL channel. We publish new content on a regular basis, all of it specifically tailored to help small businesses to truly thrive. And if you'd like to help your small business thrive, you can click on the link in the description below this video to download a free PDF called Taking Your Organization's Temperature. It'll give you a real insight into the health of your organization and show you ways that you can make things run even more smoothly and do even more in the days to come. Thanks again for joining me today. I invite you to come back for the next installment. Remember at Valor XL, we're committed to helping you do smart work. I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.